Okay, what are flying buttresses for? This is Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, I guess. Flying buttresses on it. Sometimes you hear what people say. I, was, I learned this when I was in school. That, that holds the roof up, roof up. That helps hold the roof up. And here's another shot of them off the, I think it's off of this part. I'm gonna call that the nave, but I'm not sure. There we go. And you can see some examples of them here. What are they doing? Are they holding the roof up? Well, let's first of all take a look at the forces that are involved in anything. One, you've got a compression force. This is the force that squeezes things together. So this could be a compression force, pushing this here, the studs in a house hold up whatever's above, partly by compression. With a shear, you're pushing up on one side and down on another. So if you, I don't know, were using that to support a wall, this would bend the board, possibly break it, break the stud. And this is what makes uh, shear forces work, like in a pair of scissors. Let's see, if it was upside down like this, well, I'll do it this way. This side's coming down, this side's going up. That will cut the paper when that edge is sharp and on, on a small scale, so it will rip right here. With compression, it would just smash everywhere. Tension, you're pulling apart. So even on a, a board like this, you could put tension forces to pull this apart. A rope, a string, tension force would pull this apart. Or a spring. Tension forces could pull this apart. I don't have a, uh, like a leaf spring on a car or a, uh, what would be kind of this one really. I don't have a, one of those spiral springs, a coil spring, but like Wiley Coyote would use on the cartoons to jump around, that would be a compression force. And you can have springs that do that. A torsion force is one that's twisting. So, I can have a mass on this uh, spring here, and if I twist it, it twists back and forth this way. That's a, that's a torsion force. You may have a coil spring at the top of your garage door that you twist up like this, and it makes uh, for torsion, and it twists your garage door up and down. Now, tension force, this also oscillates this way. So when you test, that's what the spring is made for, simple harmonic motion. It's using tension force to, to oscillate. If you have in an arch, stone doesn't do tension force very well. it will tend to split. Stone doesn't do shear force very well. It will tend to split. Tone, uh, stone does not do torsion force very well. It will split. What stone is really good at is compression force. You can't smash the stuff. So concrete and stone, we use it when we've got compression. If you're, if you're gonna use it for other things, you maybe need rebar or that sort of thing. But if you make an arch, all of these forces from different directions tend to push together and that will push the, the blocks this way together. So it, it, to an extent, it gets stronger as you apply force to it in an arch. Because you're converting all sorts of other forces into compressional forces, torques and that sort of thing. Okay, so an unsupported roof, let's say you're building a big church or a barn or something. An unsupported roof if you just set this together, and you see barns do this as they get older and start to fail, that will over time push down and out and rotate out and the sides will split and it will start to collapse that way. And sometimes you can see that with barns. So how would you get around that? How would you prevent that from happening? Well, one way would be to prevent this from spreading, prevent this from going this way and this from going this way. Tie that together. 
Well, okay, here's another way. One way is just put columns in there to hold this up. You know, put beams and columns and walls in there to hold that up. Okay, and you do see this in barns where there's columns that go up. Maybe there's a, some big churches. There's a big church in Lottaville that's like this. And big columns that go up and there's archwork up in the attic. The ceiling is up, way up here tall, but there's truss work up in the attic. And basically you have columns running up through, holding that roof up. Well, you don't have that in Notre Dame. You could use pillars and it's really cool and it's really beautiful, but then you got pillars in your church. You can build a big church that way. Really big one. I think it's in Deschler. There's a, I think a Lutheran church up here that's built this way. You keep this side from coming out and this side from falling over and these sides from rotating in with torques by tying it all together with truss work. And the truss work keeps this two sides from going out and these coming down. It all, it all holds together. So you're actually using some tension force and different torque forces in there to, to do this. Or the last option is, if you want to build a really big church and have it really open inside and have it really be impressive, is put this truss work on the outside. And these are called flying buttresses that we saw earlier. And what this does, it doesn't hold the roof up that you commonly see. This wall wants to be pushed as the roof parts apply a torque and they want to come down. They want to push the walls out. And so what you need to do is have a wall here with some stone coming over that's pushing this back in. So hopefully these inward forces balance these outward forces and it stays up. So what you're doing with the flying buttress is not holding up the roof but you're holding the wall in so torques don't push it out. Now, last spring, Notre Dame burnt badly and a lot of this roof collapsed in. Now, they got engineers on that right away and got this all supported, but in the meantime, while they're doing that, what was the danger of happening here? Well, the danger was happening was that these flying buttresses that are designed to push the, the walls in so that this weight, weight of the roof and torques don't push it out, holds it in place, that with all of that roof work removed and, and fallen down, that it would push these over and in. So that's one of the things they had to shore that up to keep that from happening. 